Hello people, so episode 9, 10 of One Piece is out, and this is the episode that gets us introduced to the 20 year fl flashback of Wano, and how Kinemon, Raizo, Kanjiro, Momonosuke, Okiku, all made it 20 years in the future, and it had to do with Lady Toki's ability, so we found that out, we also found out most of the life of Kazuki Oda, which is funny because in the manga I'm going right now, that's been explained in full detail, plus his design is completely different, but I did appreciate this episode for what it was. So, it starts off with at the hideout, or the ruins of Odin Cow, and I love the very first thing you see, because it des describes pretty much the vibe of Lady Toki's abilities, the very first thing you see before the title sequence is Lady Toki and the fire. So it's already, already, you know how it's going to take place, but, so I like that attention to detail there, and caused a lot of, rep he had a huge reputation, and he got, he got exiled from the flower capital. Now, those who read the manga, we know what that reason is, but, his like, ongoing personality, it's like, he doesn't want to be restricted, he wants to roam free, in fact, he doesn't even want to be at Wano. The hype is like, building, because he was also sought out by Whitebeard, and Goldie Roger. We know he interacts with Roger because of what we found that in Zoe. But the fact that he also interacted with Whitebeard as well, that's hype. So he, he went on, on his way, he got exiled from the flower capital from and on the way he actually I guess he got into a, a ton of fights with a bunch of exiled like lawless fighters, I guess samurai. Who band, band together. Odin took Odin took care of them easily and then Later on, he challenged somebody by the name of Ajra Doji. Jakuri, which wasn't really the previous shogun, the father of Kuzuki Odin, wanted nothing to do with Kuri because he wasn't, he had a bad reputation for having criminals, so he took on Ajra Doji. And we know what went down. In fact, it was revealed in this current chapter, but obviously we know the outcome of this episode. Ajra Doji gets defeated and Spoiler alert, we are going to get, we're going to see Ajra Doji in the present very soon. And because of that, he gained the reputation and he gained the following from the samurai of Kuri, who actually re resided him as a leader. And because of this, the his father, the Shogun, actually appointed him as the daimyo of Kuri when he was only 20 years old. So that's a pretty impressive feat. So he gained followers and he made Kuri into an actual village. When, it wasn't like that before, and I love how this is flashback is going on. You got Chopper and Luffy like, so okay, cool. So you know Luffy's on board because he's just like Odin because he doesn't want to be tied down either. He likes freedom, so that's kind of cool. And also, I noticed how Luffy was like munching away during this flashback. It's typical Luffy. When Luffy found out that o Kazuki Odin was labeled as a criminal, Luffy gets pissed. In fact, he just punches. A pillar at the wall at the hideout, so because he gets pissed off, everybody else is tearing up. Sanji's shocked, not showing any emotion, but you know he's like pissed off by this. So I like that because it adds fuel to the fire for the battle against Kaido. But found that we know obviously Odin gets executed, we know that because what we found out in Zo, boiled alive by Kaido and Orochi, he got executed. That already took place. Kanjiro, Raizo, Kinemon, and Momonosuke. Um, Okiku apparently, because they were taking care of business, they made it too late because the fire already took place. Kaido already attacked, and what's really cool is we see the fire at the castle, and we see the silhouettes, the shot of all three calamities, and we don't get to see them, what they can do. We just see the underlings attack, killing them on the rest. Cool, they made it to the castle. Lady Toki is like, she, they're still alive. Getting here, alert. Here is the sister, Momonosuke being the son, obviously, we know they get taken in. So, Lady Hi Toki says, you need to go on. That the Lady Toki has the Toki Toki fruit, the time travel fruit. And she's a relic of the past who, who can only travel into the future. She can't travel back in time, she can travel into the future, which raises a lot of eyebrows and questions of what really, where is she from? She's a relic from the past. Does this have anything to do with Emu Summer? That immediately comes to mind when you think about time travel. So I don't know. Hopefully, I guess explained. And there has to be a reason why, for the most part, Hiori and pretty much 
Lady Toki is in silhouette. You don't really silhouette them that much unless they're going to play a role down the line. So that's kind of funny to me. I like the voice actor too. I think it's Mosque saying, no, I don't want to leave you. As all mothers do, they let their children go on ahead in One Piece. So she tears up, says, you need to go on. And just like that, she sent them into 20 years to the future. And everything's already messed up. Like, you got the factories already there. Kaido and Orochi in, in power, pretty much. Stones of Momonosuke, Kanjo, Kimi Mom, rise out from Momonosuke, as well as obviously Odin, Toki, and, and Hiori also being there. I'm assuming Hiori's grave has to be there too. So the belief is that they're, dead, they're already dead, and that like, actually labels to their advantage because planet counter attack. Which I'm assuming is going to happen in the next episode. So it's a heart wrenching episode, obviously. Some residents of Kuri approach Kinemon and the rest, and they actually want to help out. So that's kind of cool. There's some, there's some underlings that actually want to help out. And not give, before they get sent into the future, we actually get a shot of another samurai with a with a hat. And we already get to see him there with Hiori and Lady Tokyo and Momonosuke. So that was kind of interesting to me. The, the straw arts were showing emotion. I do like how. The beginning of the end of the episode, you have Law, who was outside listening. I already pointed this out, but I think Law's already heard the story before, so I get to see Zoro in action against the spirit animal, the tiger, and gets finally takes him down. But because of this, he's already lost, and he sees a a port, a dock, and that's where he goes, and that we know it's not going to be the right direction, so that's why he separates from the crew. So I like, again, the attention to detail there. So now time travel is a thing in One Piece, and at least it's explained to a certain extent. We got some level of hype when it comes to Kazuki Odin and his adventure beginning and ending, which is funny because we found out that he got executed in the Flower Capital, but he actually didn't want to be a part of the Flower Capital. He is like a spirit that wants to roam free, very much like Luffy, very much like Raja. So you can see why he interacted with the King of the Pirates very easily. The Raffle, we know he is has some connection to Raftal too, so that's going to be funny if that gets explained. There's a lot of mystery when it comes to Lady Toki and Hiyori, because why would you silhouette them if they're already dead? So that strikes in, cause suspicious to me. All in all, it was a great episode. Next episode, the, the team Whole Cake Island, the group that went to Whole Cake Island, are going to finally, they're going to suit up for Wano so they can get their mission, their, their roles, and I'm assuming it has something to do with the Gavel and Samurai. At least Robin's gathering her, already gathering intel. In fact, we know there's going to be a deadline because on the night, of, on the night of a full moon, that's where the fire festival is going to take place, and and we know that's where the nine spirits or the samurai are going to rise up to overthrow Ka Kaido and Orochi. So that's going to be the deadline. Also, we also found out that Inuyasha is also on Kuri right now in, in present time. He was also. We get a shot of Odin actually saving Nekomomoshi and Inirashi as pups, pretty much as youngsters. So that's kind of cool in the manga. So it helps them out. In all in all, it's a great episode. Let me know what you guys think down below. That's going to do it for today, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Like, review if you did. Subscribe to my One Piece. Catch you guys later. That's guys. Bye.